Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really fun and easy embroidery floss bookmarks. These are made in just one round, each component. We're going to be making a, a one round flower, a five petaled one round flower with a button center. And then we're also going to make a one round leaf and rose combination. And then when you have your book, you can just clip them onto the page and um, these make fun um, things to have to accompany you while you're reading your book, but also if you're gift um, gifting a book to someone, you can just clip a little homemade touch onto the book as well, and they're really fun and pretty and sweet, and you can play around with the colors as well. We're going to be using some really simple, inexpensive materials, and I'm going to show you how to do it every step of the way. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, we're going to be using some paper clips for the bookmark part. Now, I like the larger ones. They're a little bit easier to use, but if you have small ones, they'll work too. We're going to be using a 3.75 millimeter F crochet hook. This is my furl Streamline. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. We are going to be using some embroidery floss. Now, I just grabbed a bunch of colors because we're going to make a rose and we're going to make like a petaled flower and a leaf. So I grabbed some, just a bunch of different colors. Um, this is DMC Cotton Floss. Uh, you can find this pretty much in every craft store and like the craft aisle of a department store as well. And it's super cheap. One skein of this I think was 25 cents if that. It's super cheap. And um, again, I just grabbed a bunch of different colors. As an option, one of our uh, flowers, uh, we're going to put a button in the center to create a, like a flower center, but it's up to you. You don't have to do that. Um, also, to attach our flowers onto our bookmarks, we're going to be using a hot glue gun. As an alternative, if you don't have one, you could use a, uh, an, any other kind of glue, really, like craft glue um, or that E6000 glue, that really like strong glue. Um, or you can just put a little stitch on there and stitch it right to your uh, paper clip as well. So let's get started. All right, we're going to start with the rows first. So uh, when you have your embroidery floss skein, um, there will usually be an end sticking out. And what you can do is I like to hold the labels in place just so it stays nice. But if you pull, you can see how this, watch this loop here, how it like pulls through. Okay. And that way it'll stay nice um, in your skein. You can just pull out as much as you need. Okay. All right. So I pulled out a little bit and we're going to start by putting a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Next, for our little rows, we're going to chain 12. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. Nice and slow. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And if you know, I'm go notice I'm going really slow. Um, whenever I'm working with really thin fibers like this, um, I like to go really, really slow just to, because um, it's so tiny. Uh, that just helps me with, work with uh, thin yarns and little tiny hooks. Okay, so in row one, it's just one row and it's gonna curl up like a like a corkscrew almost, okay, like a curly cue. All right, so for row one, our one and only row, we're going to work two double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. So the loop one here does not count. So count one, two, three, and four. That fourth chain from the hook, we're gonna work a double crochet, actually two double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook Insert it into that fourth chain from the hook and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. And then we're going to work another double crochet into that same chain. And again, go nice and slow with these little tiny hooks. Okay, and then what we're going to do is work three double crochet in each chain across. And let me just come in a little bit more. There we go. All right, so in the next chain, we're going to work three double crochet. So one, two, and 
and three. Just like that, okay? Now, in the next chain, you're gonna do the same thing, work three double crochet. And then you're gonna do that in every chain across. So I'm gonna go ahead and work three double crochet in every chain across, and then we're gonna rejoin, and I'm gonna show you what to do next. All right, just working that last double crochet of the row here. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the yarn, and we're gonna fasten off. So wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. We're gonna leave that tail there because we're gonna use that to put it together. Now, it doesn't look like much now. It just looks kind of like a mess, really. But when you put lots of stitches into one chain, it creates, it starts to curl. So our piece is curling kind of naturally here, okay? So here is our little rose and it kind of coils in on itself. So what we're gonna do now is assemble it. So grab your tapestry needle and just thread it with one of the tails. I like to start with this end one here. And I wanna take, I don't want this to stick up because it won't look as real. So I sort of will bring this behind here and then just take my needle into the spot and through the bottom and then just kind of pull it in. So pull that corner in. Now take your other tail that's in the middle and thread that one with a tapestry needle. Now to hold this rose together, you need to come up from the bottom to the top, and you only need a few well-placed stitches. You don't need a whole lot. Um, if you actually put too many stitches, it'll flatten your rose out. So come up from the, the bottom and come in um, and grab one of those stitches on the top middle, and then kind of go back down and sort of tack it into place like that and pull it through, okay? Now you can do this a couple more times. Just come up from the bottom. Whoops, and my tail uh, fell off my needle here. But come up from the bottom and then go back down just to sort of like tack everything into place and hold it, okay? And then once you sort of tacked everything down, flip your rows over and take the, the two tails here and just tie them together, okay? And then because we're gonna be gluing this, um, you can take these two tails if you want to sew it and you can stitch it right to your paper clip, but we're going to glue ours. So what I'm going to do is just give this a snip, okay? Just snip it flush to the back, okay? So here's our little rose and I'm just going to set this aside because we're going to make our flower next. All right, for our flower, I grabbed my purple embroidery floss. You can do any color you like, obviously. Uh, we're going to put a slip stitch onto our, or a slip knot rather, onto our hook. And then what we're gonna do is chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then what we're gonna do is go into the chain farthest from our hook, that first chain we made, and work a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that chain farthest from the hook, bring up a loop, and then bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook and that's our ring that we're gonna be working into, okay? We're also gonna hold this tail along the edge as we work, and that will kind of uh, weave it in as we go along. All right, our petal has five petals. So for each petal, we're gonna work three double crochets and then a slip stitch in for each petal, okay? So let's do the first one together. So three double crochet. So one, nice and slow and then two and then three now again this is for the first petal and then if you need to pull more yarn or floss rather out of your skein go ahead and do that okay so I work three double crochet and then we can slide those over and then I'm also gonna work a slip stitch into the center. So insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And we have our first petal, okay? So repeat that for the rest of your petals. We're gonna do this four more times for a total of five petals. Okay, so I have my five petals. One, two, three, four, five. And then what we're gonna to do to close the round is work a slip stitch at the base of that first petal. So go in to the base of that first petal 
insert the hook, bring up a loop. There we go. And then bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and then kind of like tighten it down a little bit. And then we're gonna cut our yarn. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. And then we're gonna fasten off, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop, okay? And then tighten. All right, now it looks a little crazy once again, like the rose did, cause it's so little. So you gotta like kind of neaten it up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is flip our flower over and remember that tail that we held along the edge as we worked, we're gonna pull that nice and tight. And it won't close it up all the way, but it will certainly make it look a little neater. And then we're gonna snip that tail and then grab your tapestry needle. We're gonna flip it back over and you can thread the tapestry needle. Flip your flower back over and we're gonna weave that end in, okay? So just go nice and slow because it is tiny and just go in those back loops on the back of the flower, okay? And then give it a little snip. And then what I like to do is just flip it back over and just kind of neaten things up. Get those little bit of definition to the petals, kind of like define each one. And here's our little flower, okay? So now we have a rose and a flower. And then the next thing we're gonna make is our leaf. So I'm gonna grab some green. I have this like, kind of like an evergreen kind of teal color. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is put a slip knot on our hook once again. Same way we've been doing before. And then we're, this time we're gonna chain four. We're gonna work into the center of a ring like we did for our flower, our little purple flower, okay? So chain four, one, two, three, and four. And then in the farthest chain from our hook, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to create our ring, okay? And I like to, whenever I'm doing rings like this, I like to kind of open them up a little bit just to um, make sure I have plenty of room to work into, okay? All right, so now we have our ring and what we're gonna do is work the bottom of the leaf first. And we're gonna do that by working six double crochets. So one double crochet, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna get a little bit more off of here. I'm pushing things over if you need to, and six. Okay, that's gonna be the bottom rounded part of our leaf, okay? This leaf does not have a stem. Oops, it's split a little bit, there we go, okay. All right, so there's the bottom of our leaf. Now we're gonna work up the side of our leaf and we're gonna do that by working four single crochets this time. All right, so into the center of the ring, work four single crochets. Insert the hook into the center, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through both loops. That's one, two, three, holding that tail along the edge, and four, okay? Now we're gonna come up to the top and work that point. And we're gonna do that with a treble crochet. So to do a treble crochet, wrap yarn around hook two times, one, two, insert into the center of the ring, you'll have four loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And now we have our leaf point. So let's work back down the side of our leaf. And we're gonna do that like we did the other side by working four single crochets. I'm still holding that tail along the edges I work. And we're gonna work four single crochets into the center of the ring. So one, pushing things over if needed, two, three, and four. And then to close up our little leaf, we're going to work 
a slip stitch into that first stitch. So just find that first stitch that you worked and work a slip stitch to close the round, okay? Now, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop, and we need to fix our leaf up a little bit. It looks kind of loopy and I think it makes it look kind of lacy. All right, flip it over and that tail you worked along the edge, pull that nice and tight, give it a snip to get that out of your way. And then grab your tapestry needle. I still have my purple one there. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Flip it over to the back. And like we did our other two pieces, um, go ahead and thread that along those back loops and weave that tail in. And then we're gonna cut our little tail off. And then what you can do is sort of shape up your leaf. Make sure the bottom's nice and round. Make sure that top is nice and sharp. Nice little leaf. Okay, so we have all of the components to our two little bookmarks we're making. So let me zoom out so you can see everything I have here. Let's get all of our pieces together. We have our two bookmarks we're assembling. So on this one, I'm gonna do a purple flower and we're gonna put a, like layer a button over top. Okay, and then our other one, we're gonna put our leaf down first and put a rose on top, okay? So let's grab our hot glue gun, which I plugged in ahead of time while I was crocheting to kind of let it warm up and do its thing. So what we're gonna do is put glue onto the bookmark. So let me zoom in just so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, we're gonna just put it kind of along the edge here and we want to get enough on there and it's very thin metal, a paper clip, so it's easy to kind of like get it everywhere. <laughs> but if it if it blobs just whoops like it did there, just kind of like sort of scoop it off. But you want to get a good amount, especially if you're going to be using your bookmark a lot. Um, you don't want it to fall off. Okay, so I got a nice little amount there and I'm just going to stick my flower on there and be very careful as you press this one, not to burn yourself. Try not to like press in the middle of that hole there. And then what we're gonna do is put some glue. Actually, I'm gonna lay this down. We're gonna put some, and I'm getting ready to, <laughs> this one, this particular glue gun I have, I have a couple of these. This one is extra like drippy. Some of them are a little bit neater than others, but just be very, very careful. I can't tell you how many times I've burned my hands on these things. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of drop it into the center of my flower and I've glued it to the table, which I've also done a million times, glued things to tables. But then we're gonna sort of shape it up, just get like a, just a light little press, try not to touch those middle holes because the glue will blob out. Now, see how I have a little like glue tail here? Let that dry and then you can snip that with scissors. Don't worry about it while it's hot and it can burn you, just leave that be, all right? So we're gonna put that one aside. Now let's grab our rose. And I will say, I always make a total mess when I use hot glue. All right, so I'm gonna blob, blob, blob it right on there. And I'm gonna make my leaf kind of pointing upward like this, okay? You wanna do it so that it'll show through the rose. You don't want it to pull it too far in, okay? I'm just gonna kind of press it on there. And then I'm gonna put another blob on top of my leaf Try not to do too much or it'll kind of soak through. But then we're gonna put our little rose on top. And I will say that this, and I have a little bit on the back, that's okay, we can snip it later. Um, if you give a gift as of a book to someone, this makes a really nice little gift. You could kind of just stick it right in there, okay? So what we're gonna do now is just put these aside and let them completely cool and dry. Okay, so they've cooled and dried and they look so super cute, I love them. Now, remember I said this, you you can just uh, snip that. Hot glue is super easy to cut with a pair of scissors and it, it won't really mess your scissors up. Um, if you're worried about it, just make sure it's completely dry because if it's soft, it could get into your scissors. And if you're worried about it, you can just use like an old pair of scissors if you have them. Um, sometimes uh, I like to keep my old pairs of scissors for things that might mess the scissors up and then I keep my nice sharp scissors for like snipping yarn or fabric or something like that. Okay, so our little bookmarks are complete and you can kind of clean them up if you have little like hot glue strings. Um, or 
uh, you can kind of wave a hot, not touch it, but wave a, a hot hair dryer over it and it, those little strings will disappear. So that is how you make embroidery floss bookmarks. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.